I invite you to take a moment to breathe deeply, to close your eyes, to pull your shoulders back. We spend a lot of our time thinking about things in the past, things in the future. Take this time just to be with God in this moment. To feel God invite you into worship that is always taking place in the heavenly realms. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your love and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God of mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. say something before we start. Uh, well, I'm sad we can't have one of the kids do this <laughs> today, um, but uh, just know that we're thinking about you if you're watching or if your parents are watching. But, um, please, please let the kids know that we're, we're missing them, especially today. We light Advent candles to remind us that we are people in darkness waiting for light to come. And so as we light the candles, it gets brighter and brighter until we, on Christmas Eve, light the, the Christ candle in the middle, uh, remembering that Christ is the light that has come into the world.
us, O Lord, God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Will you not give us life again? That, that your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. O oh, come, come, let, let us, us worship. Come, let, let us sing, sing to the Lord. Let, let us shout for, for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let, let us come, come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise the loud shout to him with songs. The for Lord the Lord is a great God, God and a great King above all gods. gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The kingdom of God is at hand. O oh, come, let us worship. We'll now have our first reading. First lesson is taken from, taken from Isaiah chapter 64, verse 1 to 9. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you were angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O oh Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. O Lord, God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears, and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand. The one who you make strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Glory, Glory to, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. 
The second reading is taken from Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 till 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. 
and also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its lights, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he suddenly comes. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. Lord, we ask that we would understand your word, and that your word would be planted deep in our hearts and may grow and bear fruit in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's Advent, and uh, I don't think any of us were thinking that we'd still be in this at this time. Um, it's, a, it's disappointing. I, I really wish COVID would just go away. I feel sad that I can't see people I care about, like yourselves. Uh, I'm trying to imagine Christmas without gathering everyone in this building, without, I'm trying to imagine Christmas without gathering extended family and seeing friends. And I'm having a hard time wrapping my head around all the rules. Um, and trying to understand some of the consistency of the rules and why it seems to be different in, in one place and, and not in another. And, um, I don't know how to be a priest in all this. It's very strange. Um, I don't want to make anyone sick, and so I'm, I'm trying my best to be careful. And uh, but that means I'm constantly wondering how people are doing because I, I, I realize that I rely a lot on looking into people's eyes. At the end of the service, uh, when I say, how are you? <laughs> um, I, the look that, that a person gives uh, says a lot about how they're actually doing. And I'm not able to do that right now, right? So I'm um, really reliant on people to let me know how they're doing or to reach out to other people, other friends, especially in the church, let, to let them know how they're doing. Um, there are some people who are not dealing with the isolation very well, especially anyone who has memory problems or people who have existing mental health problems. Uh, this is really hard on them right now and uh, people are, are drinking more, marriages are having lots of problems. Uh, there's more drug overdoses and overuse. Um, there are suicides. There is a tension in the air that is unrelenting and emotionally draining. And COVID has been pretty theoretical up to uh, a few weeks ago. And 
now we're, we're knowing people who are getting it. Uh, it's in our community. We're hearing about uh, different communities, different individuals, extended family. Uh, we definitely know people who know people who have contracted the disease. And uh, I have friends up in Edmonton who are, who are clergy and they're having parishioners who, who are now dying from this. So it has went from being mostly theoretical, something that happened far away, to something that is right here, right now. The tension in the air seems to be making everything else worse. People are less patient. Everything has become a political symbol that divides us into one side or the other. We pick up a flag that proclaims our rights to resist government restrictions, or we pick up a flag that proclaims that those who are proclaiming their rights to resist are killing the elderly and vulnerable. The middle ground where we can actually talk and ask questions seems to have disappeared. Every statement or question is read as a coded message that leaves you on one side or the other. And add to this the divisions that we see just south of the border, which I'm sure are related to the tensions that are in the air because of shutdowns and COVID and um, everything seems to be getting really weird. And then I wonder, you know, what is the rest of the world thinking? You know, those who are dealing with terrorist attacks where there's dozens of people getting killed, those who are dealing with food shortages, those who are dealing with cyclones and, and natural disasters, they, they look at us with our state-of-the-art medical system, and I sort of wonder what they're, what they're thinking, looking in on at, at us. I just really want to get on the other side of this. I'm just, I'm really, I'm really tired of this. Um, but I know that there's worse things going on in the world right now. This is a time when we can really get what Advent is all about. Usually we're a bit annoyed by Advent, uh, if, if we're honest with ourselves. We're annoyed maybe by its darkness, uh, by its yearning for God to break in and fix things. Usually we want to skip straight into the joy and celebration of Christmas without sitting in the darkness of a confused world yearning for a Messiah. But maybe we get Advent a little bit more this year. The darkness of this time of year is not just a backdrop for the Christmas lights this year. Uh, this year it is maybe a little bit more symbolic of the darkness that, that we, our world is in. Maybe we feel the absence of God in the midst of the chaos that seems to be surrounding us. Maybe we're a little more aware of the works of darkness. We seem to be living in a place that is the first step in the AA 12 steps. Uh, we admit that we're powerless over our problems. No amount of human ingenuity or power or popularity or money is going to fix the mess of the world. And we have been optimistically telling ourselves that we can fix the world since the Victorian era. But we don't seem to be able to get there. Like all utopias, right? We, they, they seem to crumble around themselves. Things have gotten better in a lot of ways. You know, uh, medical technologies and the science has made our, our lives easier in a lot of ways. Um, but it seems like every solution that we come up with creates two new problems. Technologies that used fossil fuels created cheap energy that lifted many people out of poverty, made our lives a lot easier. We can get around a lot easier. But now we're dealing with climate change, for example. <laughs> Even if all of the outward problems are fixed, we still have to deal with the stuff we have going inside of here. I still have to deal with my own stuff, even if all the outward physical problems are solved. The early Christians were very aware of being in a hostile world, being in, in a way, a battle, a battle both internal but also external. There are external forces pushing in on them. 
And after the ascension, when Christ rose, they were left wondering when Christ might return. And they were told that they should be ready because it could happen at any, at any moment. So we read in the Gospel of Mark today, but about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Jesus says the phrase, keep awake, three times in that short passage. Of course, keep awake is not meant to be taken literally, and I've heard of people who were, as children, afraid to go to sleep because they, they were afraid that if Jesus came while they were sleeping at night that they would be caught asleep. The, obviously, this is symbolic, right? It means don't go through your life like a zombie. Don't procrastinate. The evil that you can stop, stop. The good you can do, do. Be conscious of how you're living. Don't think that you will hear the master is returning and then have enough time to get your life to a place where you feel prepared for him to return. We don't have that kind of time. We can't afford to delay. Any changes we need to make in our life shouldn't be neglected. They shouldn't be left till tomorrow. We are being asked to live consciously each day each moment, live consciously. This is a call to a moral life. There is no time to play around with sin. We have to take justice and compassion for others seriously. This is a call to discipleship. What has the master asked you to do as a part of being a part of the household? What is your gift? How are you putting it to use? This is a call to spiritual health and character formation. This is something that can't be delayed. All of us are meant to be alert, to be conscious, to be awake, to not allow our life to pass us by. When martial artists take self-defense seriously, they know that they might need to defend themselves at a time when they are not uh, sure, they're not prepared necessarily. Uh, so they're, they, they train in a way that they are ready at any moment. They train so that they're ready when someone sneaks in in the middle of the night. They train so that they're ready when someone sneaks up on them around the corner, uh, when they're walking through an alley or when they're walking down the street. They train so they can help others if they come across a situation in a parking lot where someone is, is beating up on someone who's uh, weaker than them. They know that they need to be ready because their skills might be called on when they are not expecting it. And that's the kind of alertness that we're being called into. Be ready because you don't know when, when your discipleship is going to be needed. The master has left us in charge of the house and we don't know when he's coming back. The house should be kept ready for the return of the master. We should be found having been diligent with the task that he's left for us. And that is what it means to keep awake. No matter what moment you find yourself in, be faithful. What if the master arrives tomorrow? Will we be ready? Will we have been appropriately wrestling against our own sin? Or will we, will we be found giving into it? Will he find us having been constantly procrastinating? Will we have been found to be people that create peace or people that create division? 
will the fruit of the Spirit be evident in the way that we use Facebook or Twitter? <laughs> Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'm not sure I see a lot of that on Facebook right now. The Episcopal priest Fleming Rutledge said this, the church lives in Advent. That is to say, the church lives between two Advents. Jesus Christ has come. Jesus Christ will come. We do not know the day or the hour. If you find this tension almost unbearable at times, then you understand the Christian life. We live at what the New Testament depicts as the, return, as the turn of the ages. In Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God is in head-on collision with the powers of darkness. The point of impact is a place where Christians take their stand. That is why it hurts. That is why the church has to take a beating. That is what scripture tells us. No wonder there are so many who fall away. The church is located precisely where the battle line is drawn. And yes, there is grace. Um, the master may seem gone, but that is only in one sense. Christ is present to us through the Holy Spirit. He's not left us or forsaken us. We may leave him, we may forsake him, but he won't give up on us. There is grace. We are not expected to be perfect. But too often, we use that as an excuse to not try to not attempt to get our lives in order. Dallas Willard says we can do a lot better without being perfect. And I'm conscious that there's two people listening right now, two kinds of people. One kind of person hears, well, none of us are perfect, and sees that as a sort of license to not try, right? Well, no one's perfect, so let's not worry too much about trying too hard. There's another kind of person who's listening who lives with a constant state of tension. They're worried. They, they take the, the, their preparations seriously. And they can feel kind of a crushing weight on them around all this. I almost want to take the person aside who feels the crushing weight and talk to them about grace. <laughs> but I also want to leave that tension for people who who feel the need to not get prepared, um, who think it can be left for another day, or maybe to not be dealt with seriously at all because, hey, no one's perfect. Um, if I'm honest, there's a part of me that yearns for Christ to return. But there's another part of me that is aware that I'm not completely ready. Advent is about addressing that part of me that isn't ready. The master's gone in one sense, and he has warned us to be ready for that moment, to not let our guard down, to train so that we are ready for that moment when it happens. We can't solve the world's problems. We need Christ to do that, and that's why we cry out to him and yearn for him to come and fix things. It's beyond us. But what we can do is we can be faithful and awake where we are, with those who are around us, with the tasks that are before us. We can be faithful in all that. So be awake. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, there's a lot in those readings, and they're heavy readings. But I invite you to hear what God might be saying to you through those readings. And it might be a, a difficult word, but be, be open to that word. Just take a few moments and hear what God is saying.
Let us confess our faith as we say, I believe, believe in, in God, God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our offering him is the days of Elijah. Let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Lord and head of the house of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law in Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you and all peoples will summon you to their aid. Come, set us free and delay no more. Lord Jesus, come soon. O King of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut. You shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. 
Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior, come and save us, Lord our God. Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. soon. Lord Jesus, we pray for your church and especially for the persecuted church and the church in places of conflict. Give them strength, courage, and wisdom. We pray for the unity of the church and for church leaders. May they remain true to their calling. We pray for our primate, Linda, In the Calgary Diocese, we pray for Archbishop Greg, Pilar, and the Synod Office staff. We also pray for St. John Olds, the Reverend Dr. Robert Sears, the Honorable Reverend Inez Hannett, the Reverend Jean Hunter, as well as vocational deacons and lay ministers. Locally, we pray for our priests, Chris, Barb, and Ethel, and their families. Guide and direct them. Protect them and their families from harm. We thank you for our parish and the support we find in each other, this particular community of Christ. May we always be attuned to your spirit so that not one person feels left out. We thank you for those in leadership and pray for your wisdom in these trying times. In the households of St. Leonard's and St. Paul's, we lift up the following people, Debbie Metzger, Patty and Paul Colbert, Jack and Pat Mills. We give thanks for God's healing work in the lives of members of the parish who are going through difficult times. In our parish, we remember Jim and Ethel, Grace, Jean, Karen and Colin, Ada, Susan, Marion, Jim, Vigo and Joan, as well as residents of the Riveras. We give thanks for God's healing work in the lives of others who have asked us to pray for them. Lena, Addison, Velvet, Jody, Andrew, Pat, Des, Naya and Dom, Chris and Ben, Natasha and Sam, Betty and Dan, Sandra, Mike, Logan and Leah, Will and Megan, Ben, George, Carol, Andy and Alice, Annette, as well as our Salvation Army families. We pray for those in our hearts today. Today we pray for the Lusitanian Church and Bishop Jorge Pinel Cabral. We also pray for our companion diocese of the Windward Islands and Bishop Leopold Friday. In that diocese, we pray for St. Matthew Beabu with St. Sylvan, Stubbs, and St. Mark. We pray for Greg's on St. Vincent and the Reverend Pamela Daniel, as well as the Reverend Deacon Kenwick Lewis. We pray for the peace of the world and those who are working for justice in the world. We pray that by your great might you thwart all evil designs and establish your reign of justice, peace, and love. May your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. We pray for world governments and all those in authority. May they pursue truth, justice, and peace. Give those in power wisdom and the will to work for righteousness. We pray for peoples everywhere affected by natural disasters, political upheaval, and religious terrorism, that they are comforted and aided in healing and rebuilding, and that they may find peace. During this time of COVID-19, we pray for the sick, the dying, their families, those taking care of them, those who suffer other ailments because of social isolation or loss of employment, and those whom we have forgotten. May this end soon. We pray for our own governments, Justin, his cabinet, and other MPs in Ottawa, Jason, his cabinet, and other MLAs in Edmonton, Tara and her counselors in Red Deer. Give them wisdom as they make decisions for our country, province, and city. 
in these challenging times. We remember our own community of Red Deer. We especially pray for the sick, the unemployed, the homeless, and the broken, that they may find God's healing. We remember other vulnerable people, specifically the poor, the lonely, seniors, children, and families with young children. Resources sometimes seem short, in short to, resources sometimes seem to be in short supply. May you give the most vulnerable what they need. We pray for care homes and other churches. Specifically, we remember St. Mary and St. George Coptic Orthodox Church. We ask the Lord's blessing on all teachers and students of Red Deer Public Schools and Red Deer Catholic and Separate Schools. Remembering St. Andrew and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. God of justice and peace, from the heavens you rain down mercy and kindness so that all the earth may stand in awe and wonder before your marvelous deeds. Raise our heads in expectation so that we may yearn for the coming of your Christ and stand without blame before him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Please pray with me. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our final hymn is soon and very soon.
Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God, God and the and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us, with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.